Okay, we're back, and uh, this is attempt three for this video. Um, I just got my new laptop up and running again, got two new 16 gig sticks of RAM in there and had to replace Windows and reinstall everything. That was a, just a whole fun trip. Um, so I'm trying to get all the levels and everything back correctly on this, um, this laptop. Cool. So for today's sketch, I wanted to I wanted to attempt to build something like I think three sketches ago we made a one knob randomizer thing. I wanted to make an audio effects version of that because the uh, the instrument version you know we had to use MIDI notes to fire off all the random seed and so this way this time we're going to have to kind of take a slightly different approach. So let's let's dive in. I'm going to go ahead and bust out my. Um, the noise generator rack that we had introduced in that sketch some time ago. And there we go. And so to make an audio version, we're going to need some kind of a noise signal to trigger uh, the, the random seed. If you remember this um, 8x audio uh, randomizer audio effect, it has a noise threshold. And so let's go ahead and just, um, let's go ahead and build this out. What I'm gonna use is the vinylize, vinyl distortion effect. And it's got a crackle in it. And you can see that's just spamming uh, the randomness. So we can type a decimal point in there. Let's make it a little bit more active. So I'll just do one. Okay. That's, that's probably what good enough. Okay, and let's turn off the through there and let's go ahead and make a through chain that doesn't involve this crackle. Uh, let's use the grain delay because it's an easy one to mangle sounds with. And I'm gonna take up the dry wet on that one. All right, so it sounds pretty crazy. Now, what, what I wanna do is bring in a wet and dry rack here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this container because this will turn things on and off and we don't really want that. We want, we wanna leave this thing on. And let's, we wanna mute the sound in here. So I'm gonna mute the vinyl distortion And I'm gonna map this to here. And let's try zero, I think it's maybe 0 0.01 on the min. 0 0.01, yes, you can dial in decimal, decimal points in there and it actually does something. There we go. Also, it's turning on, we want it only on when this hits zero. So let's see, 0.01 and then zero on the min. There we go. Okay, now let's map this to the parent and now let's see if that does anything. Okay, so when this is down at zero, we can pull this threshold down and we really want it to create a lot of random seeds essentially every time. So this every time this knob is at zero. Okay, cool. And you can see it. Just realized my um, face is probably covering up the grain delay here. So now you can see when it's down at zero, we get some randomness. And I'm realizing now that I'm thinking about it, uh, we're not getting quite, you know, it's it's not super fast or immediate when the randomness happens when this is at zero. So if you needed some really rapid fire stuff, we could we can increase the density here. Um, also, we've got the audio signal coming through this that's affecting it. So uh, if we wanted to prevent that, we could put a utility here and we could uh, just turn on mute there. And I want to go ahead and duplicate this. So we have an empty version of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off those, just unmap those. And so this one's just ready for an effect to be added. Um, we'll just call this template for now. And if we wanna keep everything kind of neat and tidy, 
we can move after it's been mapped this grain delay into this chain here. Now let's just double check here what's going on. Mostly picking the low notes. So if we want, we can also play with the, um, for the pitch, we could, we could bring it up so it doesn't hit so many low notes. A little bit more dramatic and, and easy to spot in here. So with this template, we can, we can add in another effect here. Let's do the, let's just do the phaser flanger. Actually, not this one. I want to bring in the old version which is no longer available for immediate use in, um, in Ableton 11. You have to open up an older project that uses it, save it in a rack, and then you can pull that rack in to Ableton 11. I actually like this old chorus. I think it makes some cool FME kind of stuff. So we're gonna play with that. And I need to pull this thing out so that I can map things a little easier. And I'm realizing you, you may not be able to see. All right, there we go. So let's unmap this. Map it to amount. Map this to rate. Map this to feedback. Wet and dry. And let's map also to here. This may be a little too nutty, but there we go. Okay, now I can drag this back into the chain there. Awesome, cool. Okay, uh, one last thing I wanted to play around with. Somebody in the uh, comment section of one of the previous videos was asking if I would play with some feedback loops. And um, I can show how to do that pretty easily. Um, using the gate effect. And if you use the side chain section and you turn this little blue button, this monitor button on, um, you can pull sound from any of these racks. So you can also pull sound from itself, which is what we want to do. Let's open up a uh, instantiate another one of these on off uh, dry wet templates that I like to use. And if you're wondering how I'm getting these effects to load in so fast, I use auto hotkey and I've just made some hotkeys, control shift one for me, like that brings in the EQ8 really fast. I know there are Max for Live patches that also let you drop in um, Ableton devices. So, um, you know, those are very useful as well, but I like auto hotkey because I can do all kinds of other fun th fun things with it too. So anyway, we'll, we'll explore that some other time. Um, but for now, let's just have some fun making some feedback. So let's turn this up and I need to, let's bring in a utility because all I want to do is make a, a group out of it. And I'm going to put this right after the gate. I'm going to, let's move the utility in here. And actually let's get some noise going um, just so we have something to play with as far as our, um, to, to generate some feedback off of. An easy noise is a, let's see, vinyl distortion and then a vocoder after. Um, you can increase the attack and release on the vocoder and you just crank up the crackle and density and you got yourself a bit of an, a white noise kind of. And I'm gonna bring in another one of these dry wet templates and I'm gonna drop in this noise recipe. There we go. So if we want it quieter, we can, we can bring this down a little bit. Now, we need to configure this gate to pick up sound from our blank. We'll just call this blank for now. So let's choose, uh, let's see, yeah, four dual tone, and we're gonna pull sound from, where's blank? I know it's in there, there it is, post effects. So you can hear already, we've got some kind of nasty sounding feedback happening. So let's put, uh, the easiest way to manipulate that is with um, filters. And EQ8 is, ah, ah, sorry about that. Uh, one thing I forgot, the most important step, get that limiter on there uh, right at the end. So let's go ahead and do that. Limiter, 
put that after blank. Actually, yeah. So I'm going to put this post in here in the effects of blank since we're pulling post effects off of blank. You know, feedback through would be a return or send maybe, probably a better, better term for that. Um, so let's, and we could get an LFO going on this. Yeah, so that's already sounding really, really strange. Let's go ahead and increase that. And let's see, we could uh, get some other effects in here too. All right, and we got to get that LFO in there as well. I like a good random, uh, smooth random. So let's smooth that out. Let's uh, map to this frequency. Let me just crank up this Q because that's when you crank the Q up. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of a lot of feedback stuff happening. And you could uh, put whatever effects you want inside of this loop, inside of the feedback area chain or whatever. You, you also put some effects after that, like like a, a nice, nice delay after that. And I know my face is covering some of this up, so I'll go ahead and like close that down there. And we could put the randomizer effect inside of this if we want to get really nutty. So we'll filter on that. Slow this way down. Here we go. We've got ourselves a little feedback device. Feedback maker. Kind of sounds like an old 50 sci-fi movie effect. Um, but yeah. So there's a couple of fun little ideas for you to play with. So I hope you enjoyed this. And until next time, uh, happy sketching.